if you don't have innovation and the economy grows, it could not be sustainable. Olá, eu estou aqui com Wing Laurie, a professora da Universidade Tsinghua. Ah, claro, você também pode acompanhar o Um Brasil nas redes sociais, é, arroba canal Um Brasil, no Facebook ou no Instagram. Ms. Laurie, thank you very much for receiving, uh, for being here with us. Uh, as you teach so many of us, uh, startups are an important uh, drive to economic growth. Uh, in emerging countries like uh, you know, China and Brazil, uh, this is even more important? Uh, yes, I think this uh, uh, entrepreneurship is extremely important for uh, place, all of the place, but especially good for or important for China and Brazil. Basic reason is uh, the country uh, need to, the entrepreneurship need to be unleashed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, without uh, uh, those kind of uh, professor for business ownership, which is basically is entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and uh, you could not have uh, innovations. And uh, if you don't have innovation, and the economy grows, it could not be sustainable. Mm -hmm. in, in Brazil, uh, most startups, uh, they don't uh, grow. There's several problems in Brazil, you know, lack of credit, uh, the tax burden, bureaucracy. Uh, how can governments in all levels uh, boost growth uh, and entrepreneurship uh, in startups? I think the basic uh, um, principle is to uh, uh, let people do whatever they feel comfortable to do in the market. Mm -hmm. And that is called the free enterprise, the free competition. It is very, very important to allow that to happen. And uh, uh, place like China for a long, long time since 1949, and people were not allowed to do business. That was why China's economy got into mm -hmm. the edge of a crash, and it's terrible. I have been through that. And uh, however, right now, uh, the economy seems to be growing much better, and uh, uh, basic reason is that people are allowed to do business and a lot of young people are so excited about this opportunity and especially uh, you would not believe in that uh, in my university in the past uh, they produce uh, um, elite people in other words uh, you just uh, uh, you know, do some research and stay in a university or think tanks. But nowadays, they come to my class. They say, mm -hmm. Professor Laurie, I come to your class because I want to be a long entrepreneur. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. excitement, that kind of uh, uh, dynamism, it is very important to the country like uh, Brazil and China. Yeah, and, and this the, the point is very important for my next question is uh, we'd li we like to think of us uh, Brazilians as uh, entrepreneur uh, people, but most of entrepreneurs in Brazil, they are not entrepreneurs by choice, but by need. Uh, they can't find a job anywhere else. Uh, how can uh, uh, innovation growth in a culture of uh, entrepreneurs not by choice, but by need? Uh, that is uh, true. Uh, I have uh, feel proud of that uh, piece of research, uh, which divide up everybody's work time into two parts. One part is to do um, necessity uh, uh, to meet necessity needs, for instance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make money for paying your mortgage and buy your clothes, buy your food. Yeah and uh, to raise family. And the other part is to do something more passionate about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or, or uh, more innovative and uh, more enjoyable. So this is in general the case. When this country in general or person in particular in a kind of better economic situation, they would put more time into 
the thing they want to do mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. interesting. And otherwise, vice versa, when uh, like many developing country or underdeveloped country, they have to put a lot of time into necessity production. So basically, I felt uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of the case you will uh, when the economy grow better and then more and more people want to do things okay. that they love to do. So at that time, those people, uh, that's the only thing they want to do. Uh. So, so I think at that time, it, it, you, you don't have to worry too much about uh, you know, whether that's hard to do or something, because by that time, mm -hmm. uh, that's a joy, enjoyment. It's a sort of, um, uh, I, I do this because I want to do, because I can achieve my, my goal, mm -hmm. uh, or I can have a self-realization. So for that part, it should be a much better time. So, so there's a relation between the, this enjoyment that's right. and uh, innovation. That's right, that's right. So that is uh, uh, actually when, think about yourself or myself, and uh, when you do not have to go to work for the payment, mm -hmm. right? And then you just, uh, maybe you like to write, or maybe you like to, uh, to make some woodwork, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to write a poem, or you want to uh, travel. So anything at that time, your working time, uh, it is yeah. not, uh, you know, unbearable or something. It's, uh, no, no matter how hard you're going to do that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Brazil, there's uh, more and more uh, co-working spaces uh, to, to startups there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that sharing spaces uh, can boost innovation too? Oh yeah, that's that's absolutely right. That can because the thing about the, when you uh, do something, you feel, for instance, like myself, I'm an economist. I could just keep thinking you know, how to make people more productive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and why people, you know, uh, start businesses. This is a very interesting question, mm -hmm. and why people innovate. And uh, is that anything better to do? And my answer is no. When you put so much time to do it because you really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at that time, you could just really fully enjoy it. So like myself, I could, uh, you know, stay very, very late and that I got the you know, answer or I got a result. I, I'm a mathematician, so mm -hmm. I make these mathematical models and I get the result exactly that's the result I wanted. <laughs> and I just totally forget you know, mm -hmm. how tired I was. Yeah. So that yeah, yeah. is the situation. And then, once you, in other words, once that's what a government should do. It should allow people to find their own passion. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when they do those things, they will put a lot of time in and a lot of thoughts and then a lot of innovations. So people has, uh, to have to know several different things uh, right. to choose the ones that it, it relates to. That's uh, right. So it, it needs uh, education. For That's everyone. right. Yeah. you got to have education. Education is not uh, you know, the only thing you sit in a classroom. Uh, once if you have a passion, you may be uh, just uh, study by yourself. You will find a Coursera class mm -hmm. or MOOC class and uh, or uh, ask around uh, or find a book. So in other words, uh, once if you find a passion, if you wa want to reach your goal, you will do everything you can. Maybe start a business to do it, mm -hmm. or maybe you will just uh, stay at home to do it, or you will just go to work on the way back and forth, you will think about it. So in other words, the basic reason is you have to have that, that's a one professor is a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Edmund uh, Phelps. So he mentioned about uh, it is very important to have dynamism in a society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Without those kind of dynamism, 
uh, what it means to Dalamism. The Dalamism is uh, people's willingness and the uh, capability to innovate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is the important part of a society. Mm -hmm. Once you have this Dalamism, I believe people are happy to do the work and the society can enjoy the result of the work. Yeah, of course. In uh, one of your uh, extremely influential uh, recent articles and book uh, about Alibaba, you say that uh, in this uh, digital age, uh, the technology-driven platform uh, can boost uh, small businesses to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will give you an example of Brazil. In Brazil, we have uh, a very expensive internet, uh, irregular, and uh, in some regions, almost non-existent. How can uh, a country use the advantages of the digital age uh, without good internet access? And what China did uh, to, to create this uh, condition, this background for uh, the small business thriving through the technology? I think that is a very, very important thing. Just a little while ago, I gave a talk, the profound uh, things a government can help for economic development is the cyberspace inclusion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in other words, in this uh, uh, age, we call it internet age or big data age, uh, you know, information age, if you don't have uh, this hardware to link everybody, and you cannot do anything. You cannot achieve anything. So I think that should be government first priority and to put this uh, wires everywhere and allow everybody to have access to the cyberspace. Yeah, and when we talk about everywhere, it's not just every uh, uh, piece of land in the urban sentence. You mean the, the I mean, as long as you have people there, you have to, yeah. you have to wire it up. Mm -hmm. It's just that, that is, uh, uh, I think that is a profound basic need. And, and, and China did it when? Yes. I think China has been doing this uh, for a while. It's not everywhere yet, but very close. Mm -hmm. And I went to a lot of uh, rural area. And uh, believe it or not, uh, one place was in a mount mountain area. Mm -hmm. So I went there and that is, uh, became a Taobao village. I don't know whether they heard about that. That means the whole village of people mm -hmm. are doing business online. So, so that, that, that place, uh, when I got there and I opened up my phone, sure enough, I can connect to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the... Uh, I think it's really, really important to a nation like both China and Brazil. What's the role of uh, entrepreneurship uh, in the reduction of poverty and inequality? I think it is uh, extremely important. In our days, when I just came back from this uh, poverty reduction conference, um, and there's a lot of uh, uh, international organizations such as the United Nations, World Bank, they also mm -hmm. went to this conference. And uh, then people ask uh, how you can establish uh, a Taobao village so that uh, you know, poor people can do business online mm -hmm. and uh, so that they can change their lives. So, from my research, I have learned that they have to have three preconditions. One, the first one is entrepreneurs. As a leader in the village, mm -hmm. without this person, it is extremely hard to do. This is the first mm -hmm. condition. The second condition is you have to find the right product or service you're going to sell online, yes. the second one. Mm. The third one is the local government had to help, for mm. instance, uh, in a build up uh, road for transportation okay. and uh, to uh, while, to, to link to the world. 
And uh, so those kind of things have to be done by government mm -hmm. and uh, no individual can accomplish those kind of work. In other words, the government have to put infrastructure mm -hmm, over mm -hmm. there and so that you can help the people and to start. But once again, the role model from the local, very, very local uh, place, those kind of entrepreneurs is a very important role to lead everybody to do that. Ms. Laurie, uh, in this uh, globalization days, uh, the big businesses uh, around the world, they can move around almost freely. Um, most of the time, uh, uh, searching for lower costs, um, cheaper labor costs. And this leaves that place without the jobs that they had before. Uh, and uh, at this uh, context, how important are startups and inter entrepreneurship uh, for job creation? It is. Uh, <laughs> Once if you have an entrepreneur there, and job will be there. Because mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. those kind of startups, they start off a business. They're not start off anything else. So once you have a business, uh, not only the particular product you're going to sell, but a lot of uh, service. For instance, uh, they have a good example in, in China. It is called a Shaji. Uh, uh, right now, they establish a cluster to produce uh, uh, furniture. They call that as uh, uh, like more or less like China's IKEA. Mm -hmm. So one uh, just entrepreneurs they 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 really want to find something to do, and then he walk uh, uh, in uh, Shanghai, and he walk into IKEA. And then he just find out, this is what my father and my uncle can do. Mm -hmm. So quickly he, he grasped this idea, came home, designed furniture, and then father, uncle start to make. And all of a sudden, the whole f furniture mm -hmm. just started to do, produce. And quickly they find out, we, we make this, who are going to move out of the finish? Uh, so you have to find people to do this uh, yes. logistics yeah. and transportation and shipping and handling all of those things. And then after that, the people find out, how can I sell my product? I designed it beautifully. So now you need advertisement. Mm -hmm, so after mm -hmm. advertisement, and then you need some models and to sit on some place mm -hmm. and then you have a whole bunch of service established tell you a very, very good story about this place originally this is a very, very poor village there's no jobs and no, even no land is very, very mm -hmm, poor mm -hmm. they only can collect all of the garbage especially those plastic bags plastic mm -hmm, bottles mm -hmm. and to recycle that and then make the local areas terrible place but once they have done this uh, you know e-commerce not only they fully employ the whole village people and it turned out uh, they have there's not enough labor, so they have to hire people around. Not only that, <laughs> but also university students come to here. This is just a village, it's just a little township. Mm -hmm. They came here. So therefore, this place with the development, with the growth, right now this place became a small town and a small city already. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is called the urbanization yes. and a very, very, with a very, very beautiful locality mm -hmm. and a local cultural and a mm -hmm. local uh, accent, you know, mm -hmm. and then they have this kind of township over there already. It's a beautiful story. It's amazing. It's an yeah. amazing story. Yeah. Miss uh, Laurie, uh, what's the relation between uh, a culture of uh, entrepreneurship uh, in a country or in cities or in small towns uh, and the economic well-being of its citizens? You, you, you just That's gave right. us a great example, right. but it's, there is a, a clear relation between uh, the, the spirit of entrepreneurship and the well-being, economic well-being. I, I think this 
let's say if you want to build up this kind of entrepreneurial society, mm -hmm. you really need to have people work together. That is what I mentioned about uh, in China uh, and uh, in the past, they have, they have to start up and the business and, and then try to do something and uh, to make the first stage uh, income. Mm -hmm. And after that, and there's a lot of people from business schools and told them you have to do big, you have to do stronger mm -hmm. and uh, promote a small group of people and those people made money, they can leave the town, leave the uh, village, and go to big cities. That's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you need to do is, uh, with the government intervention or government's role, and uh, to just like divide up this kind of the pie and uh, more equally, in other words, uh, immediately once you start to take off, and the government should think about education, mm -hmm. local education, yeah. edu not only educate uh, uh, small kids, but also people need to learn how to improve mm -hmm. their ability to catch yeah. up mm -hmm. the new, new, new age, right? And also immediately should have good health in that region. Mm -hmm. And uh, more importantly, you have to improve people's lives by changing the environment and make that more green and make that uh, more livable and uh, make that more beautiful. So this is uh, what China is doing now. And uh, while you have this uh, e-commerce development also combined with uh, beautifying those, uh, mm -hmm. those uh, villages. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's come out uh, beautiful. Uh, you have to combine all of those things. So as long as you think about improving people's uh, economic well-being, and then people feel happy, and the people will stay. So this is why mm -hmm. in many, many places now, the immigrant workers came back. It's to, happening now. It's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And the college student originally they went out of the village because they want to change their lives. Now they came back because right. they really love the, the, the hometown and they really believe they can make a difference to make this hometown more beautiful and the people are happier. And uh, uh, Professor, uh, both in developed or in developing uh, countries, uh, the youth are having a hard time finding jobs nowadays. Uh, is entrepreneurship the solution for these young kids? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in this, uh, you know, we do not have time for lecture <laughs> at <laughs> you know, in, in this uh, uh, new, new age, and talk about the internet and the big data, and there is a very important phenomenon that's called the long tail. In other words, uh, you do have a big companies produce, for instance, clothes, right? Mm -hmm. You can create you know, very, very high efficient uh, uh, place that can produce very fast and very cheaply. Mm -hmm. But also nowadays with the improvement of people's lives, they want to have special clothes. I want to have my clothes different with some space. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity for people to make that special design and to satisfy small group, groups of people's needs. Mm -hmm. So this is, we can see it now in China, almost everywhere. And especially where educated <laughs> college graduate they came to fill this long tail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so in other words, uh, um, once they once they have one idea, catch up one idea, and uh, and find the special niche market, and then when they have their own job, they can provide a job for somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, uh, your uh, now world known research uh, regarding uh, the Alibaba model, uh, what this uh, model can uh, teach us about entrepreneurship? I think it can, uh, I think that at least uh, 
we should learn there's a new model, and the model is called Growing by Unleashing Grassroots Entrepreneurship. And that's what, what happened is uh, you could have a big giant uh, internet companies and or platform companies, they provide a service for, for, mm -hmm. for, for millions of people uh, to do business on, on the platform. But in the same time, those, a lot of small business will rely upon this, this uh, platform. So it's uh, formed up a new ecosystem. And uh, I call that as uh, David and Goliath's uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, cooperation. And they can work together mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, then they can create uh, more uh, innovative product and also they can improve the technology as well. Be careful here though, Goliath is also big, but uh, David could uh, kill him up. <laughs> yeah. Because if uh, this Goliath not work hard, not provide the best technology and the best service, this will be out. Mm -hmm. so, so that is the profound uh, uh, situation in China. Uh, and then another thing uh, in my book, I, I, I highly uh, recommend that uh, uh, you need to um, satisfy individuals. Uh, oh, I call that as uh, uh, Maslow uh, hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you need to make people feel uh, they are growing and with, with doing this kind of business. And uh, final thing is uh, try to avoid uh, a societal falling down into the in middle income trap. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, once you start to do business and uh, maybe a few people can do much better than others, and the old model would uh, really you know, support these uh, winners but uh, that's, that's the good old way. And the new way is uh, you have to make a community grow together and uh, so that you can avoid that kind of middle income trap. Ms. Laurie, thank you very much for your time with us. It was an amazing yeah, welcome. interview. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Very enjoyable. Thanks.